Roadmatteracings.com. I'm Magic, and then after a whirlwind weekend of Kentucky Derby prep race action, it's time to give the latest Kentucky Derby top 10 contenders from this guy right here, Aaron Halterman. Looking forward to seeing where you're going number 10, buddy. You know, I think we've really kind of found out a lot last weekend, and I think the picture becomes a little more clear, and, and as we go, it'll become really clear. I'm starting to see some separation, but to start at number 10, I think in due time deserves to be at this spot. Uh, horse stepped up first time against Stakes Company in the Fountain of Youth, coming off a big allowance win at Gulfstream Park. He ran very well. Uh, you know, he kind of didn't get the greatest of trips as far as having to take a lot of dirt in the race, maybe being a little bit too far back compared to where he was in that allowance win. Um, he did save a lot of ground. He, he showed he's kind of a nimble horse. He kind of weaved in, in and out of traffic. Uh, ran on late. Really good second. I think he can move forward off of it. So in due time, number 10 for me. I'm guessing he's not going to be the only son of not this type who makes the list. He's a very uh, prominent sire in the Kentucky Derby Trail. Where are you going at number nine? Number nine, I'm going to I'm going to stick with Mo Donegal. Y you know, I'm on the fence with him about just how good he is, but I do think simplification coming back and winning the Fountain of Youth really helps Mo Donegal. Uh, even though he scratched out of the race with a fever slash drawing the 12 post uh, in the Fountain of Youth, still it's like, well, I mean he was right there with simplification in the Holy Bull. So I think it helps him. I, you know, I think pointing towards the wood, which is where they're saying he's going to go next. I think that's actually really good for him. Um, I think he, that's a race he could certainly win. So I think he's right there at number nine. We know he likes, uh, likes the distances that they get longer. His running style is still kind of in question, but uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not down on him because he scratched. I, I still think he's in the mix here. It's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, Todd Pletcher would have had multiple horses on your top 10 list. We'll see if Mo Donegal is the only tapster to be on here. Where are you going number eight? Yeah, Morello is who I went with number eight. And this is a new horse that was not on the top 20 before the Gotham. Uh, just a really, really nice horse that just keeps progressing. Three starts, three wins. He's won at six furlongs, seven furlongs, and a mile. Now we got to go to a mile and an eighth next, probably in the Wood Memorial. That's when we're going to find out if this horse is a true contender. But I think that race in the Gotham and getting a 96 buyer, which is, you know, very similar to the other's preps uh, that happened last weekend. I think that's enough to put him in the mix. Usually on, uh, you know, Saturday night, Sunday morning, when we get those buyers, the Gotham's usually the lowest, right? And it wasn't this time. So I think it's a breath of fresh air uh, up in New York. I, I have Morello number eight. I think, I think he's one we better watch. It's interesting. We were just talking about the uh, aqueduct circuit is starting to be a little more prominent this year. Mo Donegal and now Morello making your top 10 right now. What about mm -hmm. number seven? Number seven, I went simplification. I, I am conflicted putting him here. I will readily admit he has me very confused. OK, I, I went into the Fountain of Youth thinking ah, I really like him. I don't think he's great or, or you know, in terms of can he win the derby type of horse. Right. I come out and I'm like, I, he could, like, he's tough, man. And again, he got a terrible trip. He he closed in one easily going a mile and 16th at Gulfstream. That is very hard to do. But at the same time, I'm sitting here thinking 20 horses, he gets that kind of start. He gets shuffled back. You know, all of a sudden a horse that had plenty of early speed has no early speed or kick out of the gate. I just don't think he can get shuffled that far back and, and, and win a race like the Kentucky Derby. So that's why I have him seventh. Um, boy, I sure like to see a race where he gets out of the gate. Well, he either goes to the lead, sits second or third and wins. He might be like number two, if that was the case or number one. I'm so confused by this horse. I have a ton of respect for him. I just am really skeptical. If we're, if we're getting bad trips down at Gulfstream, we're really going to get a bad trip in Kentucky. So love him, much respect to him, worried about his trip on the first Saturday of May. I think one thing you cannot argue is that the horse has a tremendous amount of heart and fight in him. Reminds me a bit of another Antonio Sano trainee who also won the Fountain of Youth Stakes back in 2017 named Gunavera. Simplification seems to be a little bit more tactical than Gunavera, who is more of a stone-cold closer, and that always is going to hamper you in the Kentucky Derby. So curious to see how Sano handles simplification moving forward. Where are you going, number six? Yeah, it, it, just real quick on simplification, you're right. He's starting to remind us of Gunavera. And the damn horse is capable of winning gate to wire. So it's it's just odd. That's what I'm saying. I'm just I'm, I'm freaked out by this horse. I like yeah. him. Anyway, <laughs> number six is Smile Happy. Um, you know, I had him number one to start the year. Uh, I, I've had him in the top five. I moved him down to six 
kind of just a matter of, well, he didn't run last weekend and the last couple of weekends. And so some horses that have just kind of jumped off the page a little bit, just moved ahead of him. But that's not to say Smile Happy can't jump back uh, up into that top five and maybe top two or three, depending on what he does next in his prep. But the bottom line is he was well beaten uh, in his last prep. Not that he ran bad or poorly. He did not, but he was well beaten. We'll put him at six for now. We certainly haven't forgotten about him. Like Todd Pletcher, trainer Kenny McPeak uh, had a few horses that were at the start of the year looking very strong for the Kentucky Derby. This might be the only McPeak currently on your list. We're in the top five. Who's number five? Yeah, why did Barrio going to come in at number five? He actually gains uh, respectability by not running last weekend in the Fountain of Youth. Of course, he skips uh, the Fountain of Youth to go to the Florida Derby, winner of the Holy Bull. Why did he gain? Because uh, he beat Simplification very easily in the Holy Bull. Guess what? Simplification comes back to very easily win the Fountain of Youth. So therefore, Wyatt Barrio looking pretty good. Uh, we'll see him, like I said, Florida Derby. That'll be the big test for him, but he certainly deserves to be uh, top five right now. And his first breeze back just yesterday for Safi Joseph Jr. Uh, already seems to be sharp and ready to go. Florida Derby in his sights. Number four for you, Aaron. Uh, yeah, Classic Causeway number four. We're going to see him this weekend in the Tampa Bay Derby. At least that's what they're saying. We'll never know, until, or we won't know for sure until they draw on Wednesday. Uh, I guess they didn't get the memo magic that it's kind of fun to draw these big cards earlier in the in the week, but oh well. Uh, anyway, he was really impressive in the Sam of Davis, went fast early, and was still able to kick on. So uh, I, I am excited to see him in the Tampa Bay Derby. I think he'll run a pretty good race there. Uh, we don't know exactly who that field is yet. Like we mentioned, we won't know till Wednesday. But you got to think he's going to be a strong favorite in that race. So you've given us two horses that are by not this time, simplification in due time. Not this time was a son of Giants Causeway, a late great sire. His last crop is in this field represented by Classic Causeway here. So be great to see the great sire have one last strong run here. Where are you going, number three? Yeah, number three, talk about a horse that was great on the track. Uh, Forbidden Kingdom, obviously the horse by American Pharaoh. Um, listen, Forbidden Kingdom, uh, there were question marks. How will he stretch out? Can he take that speed around two turns? The answer was a resounding yes. I mean, he absolutely dominated the San Felipe field. Uh, he didn't get a lot of pressure up front, but he's kind of starting to look and feel like a horse that, yeah, you're going to be really good to pressure him. Like you're going to have to have a lot of natural early speed. Uh, I think Bob Baffert threw a horse in there hoping to kind of speed up the pace. He couldn't match up with Forbidden Kingdom. So he's kind of got the, I'm going to run you into the ground type mentality. Uh, of course, you know, the worry is, what if somebody presses him? Well, we'll see. We don't we don't really know. But as of right now, pretty elite horse on the lead. I think he stretches out to a mile and eighth okay as long as he keeps getting that kind of trip. I, I don't think that'll be a problem. So he's he's definitely got elite talent. I don't know if he's a mile quarter horse or not. Uh, we'll see him in the San Diego Derby next, and we'll kind of get a better idea of where he's at distance-wise. But he he's earned the number three spot for now. It's nice to see a horse in California able to earn Kentucky Derby points for winning races out there. And Hall of Fame trainer Richard Mandela, one of the sport's real good guys. So it's nice to see him having a horse that's looking strong on the Derby Trail. And also the My Race Horse Ownership Group, part of Forbidden Kingdom. They had the 2019 or sorry, 2020 champion uh, Authentic. So there were no strangers to this as well. Where are you going, number two? Number two is Epicenter. And I'm telling you, this is a horse that each week I see the other ones run since he won uh, down uh, in Louisiana in the Risen Star. I go, I don't think they would have beat Epicenter. And then the next one's going, I don't think they would have beat Epicenter. I really loved how this horse's buyer improved as they went longer. And the great thing about it is we've got a mile and a 316th Louisiana Derby that we're going to see him in next. If he improves... Again, I think it's a really good sign. I think this horse is tough. I don't necessarily think he needs the lead. But, you know, in the Risen Star, we saw a bunch of horses with speed, and he just kind of went in out in front. And although it was weird, all the speed horses said, we'll let him go do that, You're right? And, and he just took it to him. That's kind of dangerous. Uh, so I, I think Epicenter is, is a very, very in intriguing prospect. Um, like I said, I just think he's, you know – like him and Forbidden Kingdom out there, I don't know. That would be close. But the rest of these, I think he's just a little bit better on Magic. So number two is Epicenter for me. I can't wait to see him on the last Saturday in March down at the fairgrounds with the Louisiana Derby. The second Steve Asmussen training to make your list. The third son of not this time on here. <laughs> and yet, all of that said, I know where you're going number one. Bring it on. 
Well, listen, I have still Messier number one. I just in the in the back of my mind going, God, they got to get this horse to the Derby, right? He's he's you know, I every week it's like I think we get better and better horses. I think people are or people horses are starting to kind of jump up. I think this crop's starting to get better. But Messier, I think, would blow him out. I mean, he's he has a buyer speed figure five points still better than any other horse uh, right now. Um, the problem, of course, is the Bob Baffert thing. And listen, I'm not I'm not living in an alternate reality. I don't think Bob Baffert is going to get horses to the Kentucky Derby. And I'm literally one to two weeks away, maybe, from just taking him off and finally just living with the fact that Messier is not going to be there. But I just at this point, I still have a hard time thinking, OK, you've got this horse. He's he's he had a 103 buyer, uh, you know, stretching out first time as a three year old in February. We might see this horse get better as the distances get longer. That's what his pedigree suggests. He got all these other horses. And while they're starting to make an impact and they're not they're not bad and they're starting to get better. We still haven't seen that triple digit buyer. And I'm sitting here with Messier. How could I not try to go to the Derby with this horse? So anyway, long story short, I'm keeping in number one for now. I still think he's the most talented horse in the crop. But you know what? If he goes to San Anita Derby and we see him against Forbidden Kingdom, wow, that could answer a ton of questions, right? Because if Forbidden Kingdom can beat him, uh, then that's wow, right? But if Messier beats Forbidden Kingdom, it's kind of a, whoa, he's really good. So that's going to tell us a lot. But anyway, Messier, number one for me still for another week. And because of that showdown potentially between Messi and Forbidden Kingdom, for me, Aaron, this is the most excited I've been about a Santa Anita Derby matchup since 2018 when we got to see Justify and Bolt Doro throw down. And that was an exciting finish. Questionable results. We don't have to get into it. But it was a very exciting race if you were there or if you were even watching. So we're hoping Forbidden Kingdom and Messi can give us another round of that. That's Aaron's top 10. Head over to racenews.com. We have free picks for every race, every track around the country. Our full coverage of the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks trails are over at YouTube.com. Slash Racing Dudes. Hit like if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you like it. Put your top 10 below in the comments. Let us know what you think about Aaron's list and who do you think should be on here that he left off. We'll see you at the track. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels. Never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.